Breaking news tonight, Mayor Kevin Faulkner has signed an emergency order to bring immediate relief to businesses impacted by new state coronavirus measures. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The order takes effect immediately and waives permitting and parking requirements to allow restaurants to expand onto sidewalks and private parking lots as outdoor dining areas. The mayor says his order will ensure that restaurants can stay in business safely. This is important to preserve people's jobs and to preserve public safety. Uh, public health experts have been clear. Uh, two key tools to help slow the spread of the virus are open air environments and physical distance. Uh, this executive order uh, makes it easier for restaurants to do both. The order will remain in effect until the city council approves a full outdoor business proposal, which was sent to them three weeks ago by the mayor. And today marks the first day restaurants must operate strictly using takeout or outdoor dining. News 8's Kelly Essendall spoke with employees at two restaurants that are right next to each other at Liberty Station, and they're working together to try and make sure they remain successful. Well, restaurants certainly welcome any help they can get to expand their dining rooms. And with at least three more weeks with a very limited number of tables, they've been forced to get creative. It's constantly changing and every day you wake up, you're kind of expecting to potentially have to change up your whole game plan. At Breakfast Republic in Liberty Station, news of the closure of indoor dining again was disappointing, but not surprising. Owner Johan Engman. It's a challenge, but I feel like I'm kind of getting numb to it where instead of having this reaction of being upset or whatever you just say okay well here's what we need to do and we just do it and this time around they're getting help from their next door neighbor stone brewing vp of hospitality greg frazier we felt it the right thing to do to help out our fellow restaurateurs. Stone has allowed Breakfast Republic to use one of their courtyards for outdoor seating, which adds an additional 90 seats for customers. I'm just super thrilled that it came together in time and obviously extremely thankful to Stone. And I mean, it's a matter of another 60%. So we're at full capacity compared to before. Clearly, Liberty Station, I mean, it's beneficial for everyone that there are destinations that remain open. The move comes as Mayor Kevin Faulkner signs an executive order to waive regulatory requirements and help restaurants expand their service outdoors, as indoor dining is not allowed for at least the next three weeks. Fraser says restaurants have to be ready for anything. Look, this may not be the last time it happens either. Meanwhile, at Barbecue House in Ocean Beach, General Manager Rocky Brown says sometimes the frustration from lack of seating gets directed at staff from some customers. When we were shut down, everyone's like, oh, thank you, thank you for being open, thank you for helping us, thank you for you know, doing your job and serving us. And then as soon as we are open and everyone to come in and eat, their attitude switched to, we deserve to be here, you can't make us wear a mask, and they just turned, they turned on us. He says restaurants across San Diego are just doing their best to roll with the punches. Back at Liberty Station. It's not a perfect science, of course, but you know, if we can do physical distancing, clearly dining outdoors is ideal. And both Frazier and Eggman say they're doing their best to remain optimistic. Uh, they're hopeful they and other restaurants will get through this. Coming up new at 6.30 tonight, more on the mayor's emergency executive order and how it impacts restaurants. Back to you. Thank you, Kelly. Tonight, county officials report 578 new coronavirus cases and 12 new deaths. Countywide, there have been 17,778 confirmed cases, almost 11,000 recoveries reported, and 399 total deaths. Out of more than 5,500 people tested yesterday, 10% came back positive for COVID-19. San Diego's two-week average positive rate is now about 6%. So far, more than 394,000 people have been tested across the county. Statewide, officials are reporting more than 6,000 new confirmed cases and more than 100 new deaths. The county releases COVID-related numbers every day, but for our hospital workers, those numbers are the faces of real patients, many of whom are fighting for their lives. As News 8 Steve Price explains, healthcare workers say the current situation is putting a big strain on the system. 
The county's recent spike in positive coronavirus cases is being felt the hardest right here in our hospitals. ICUs are filling up fast and healthcare workers fear that things are about to get a lot worse. We are really strained. The, the, the nurses are strained. We're burnt out. Michael Kennedy is a registered nurse working long hours in the ICU at UCSD. He says part of the problem is that other areas like Imperial County are so overwhelmed with coronavirus patients that their hospitals can't handle the load. They just don't have the hospital infrastructure, the healthcare infrastructure to deal with a large influx of patients. Um, and so they transferred them out to hospitals here in San Diego and elsewhere. Imperial County has transferred 500 patients in about a two week period with the majority coming to San Diego County and making a bad situation worse are San Diegans who aren't taking the pandemic seriously. We behaved as if everything was fine and everything was over. This pandemic is over and now um, we're suffering the consequences of that. San Diegans packing businesses, many not socially distancing or wearing masks. This virus is very contagious. Dr. Andres Smith is the medical director for Sharp Chula Vista's emergency department. Maybe it's because of the mass gatherings we've seen lately, but he's definitely seeing a shift in patients being seen at local hospitals. Now we're seeing younger people coming in with symptoms uh, in the 20s and 30s. Before it was more in the 50s, 60s. Dr. Smith says hospital staffs are a lot more efficient now than before when it comes to handling coronavirus cases, but it's still very stressful. Nurses, doctors um, are burning out. Some health experts fear we're only a week or so away from our hospital ICUs being completely full. Michael, who is also a union rep for the Nurses Association, hopes hospitals will stop elective surgeries again. But he's also asking you to do your part, stay home, and if you do go out, wear a mask. Your behaviors outside of the hospital are putting us in danger. And if we're not there to care for you, you will die. It's that simple. You will die if we're not there for you. In Kearney Mesa, Steve Price, News 8. Local civil rights activist Shane Harris today called on county supervisors to defend Dr. Wilma Wooten. Harris says Wooten, San Diego's public health officer, is the target of racially motivated personal attacks. There is a racial component to the fact that our county is represented by an African-American public health officer who in fact should be respected because of who she is. Recently, some have called into county press conferences to insult Wooten. One caller even gave out her home address. Harris also demanded the firing of a sheriff's deputy accused of sharing a vulgar doctored image of the killing of George Floyd last month. That deputy has already been removed from duty. Stronger police accountability and oversight will be on the ballot for San Diego voters this November. Today, City Council approved a ballot amendment that would dissolve the Community Review Board on Police Practices and replace it with an independent commission made up of community members. Unlike the current board, the commission would have investigative authority and the power to issue subpoenas. The measure needs a simple majority to pass in November. The Chula Vista Police Department is now the first in the nation that can fly its drones farther than the eye can see. This comes after the agency launched a new fleet of drones that officers can now deploy from their cars. News aide's Brandon Lewis got a chance to fly them, and he shows us how they'll be used. Now, Carla and Barbara Lee, we already know Chula Vista Police has a great drone program, but now their drones are in use, and they don't even have to be within visual range. Chula Vista Police welcomed a fleet of new drones capable of taking off anywhere in the city. And unlike their older drones, officers can use these to look behind houses or in hard-to-reach canyons. Basically, anything that's outside of their line of sight. We're able to rely on its features alone so we can keep our eyes on the screen, uh, which avoids us having to either watch the drone and stop watching whatever threat could be out there or tasking another officer. The new certification came through late last month, and it's already being used. The Skydio brand drones have a series of cameras that detect objects and avoid crashes. Even novice pilots like myself can successfully pilot them, but rest assured, officers go through a lot of training to use these in real life. Unlike the city's older drones that are based on the west side buildings, these are carried in the trunks of patrol cars and can be used on Chula Vista's east side that's out of range of the current drones. 
I found myself out east. Um, at the end of a pursuit, we had uh, several subjects run away from a vehicle. I was able to get the drone up near pretty quickly and uh, help with eight officers in the search. Chula Vista only uses its drones to respond to calls or emergencies. They're not out on patrol. The new technology and the department's experience paved the way for the FAA to grant the first-of-a-kind approval to fly the drones low and out of sight. It adds so much more as to, hey, we can go this way too, or this is a different direction we can go, uh, and it just gives you a better layout, as you give officers the layout as to what's going on uh, before they even walk anywhere. Chula Vista is the only police department in the country with this certification, but of course they hope it will continue to expand to departments across Southern California and the country. We'll go ahead and send it back to you. Thank you, Brandon. The Bayside Community Center in Linda Vista hosted a pop-up event this morning to distribute fresh food to local families. It was organized by the Count Me 2020 Coalition, which urges San Diegans to fill out the census, especially people who might normally skip it. We have the hard to count communities, people which are like seniors and people that are non-English speakers, low income, undocumented, and we have a lot of the people like that here in our community. Low response rates have been reported in neighborhoods with high density housing and mixed use, and also among Latino and Asian households. Filling out the census is safe and it tells the state and city where to spend money to help communities in need. A national movement is giving some local businesses a big boost. We're going to explain that coming up. Plus, the victim of a reported racist attack speaks out after the incident was caught on camera.